Karen's fighting employees on hardcore pawn. How are you today? All right, yourself? Um, I got some merchandise here. What have for me? Chinese bohemian hair. It's who? Oh, bohemian. bohemian. Uh-huh. Bohemian. And I Chinese pay $1,000. And the lowest I will go is 300 The kind of have Beyonce, have Beyonce wear. Oh, the same as Beyonce? Yes, yes it is. Brush for you too, I could brush it too. And you can call me. Do I see me put it on for you again? Sure. God. The following customer was looking to get some money for a wig she had. She was looking for an absurd amount of money and even claimed that Beyonce wore it. This customer was being very desperate. You see how I'm watch change. Bam! The health department won't let us sell used hair. Yo, but tell me y'all watch all y'all merchandise before y'all put no, it up on there. No, but that's only okay. that's personal no, hygiene. No, well, it's personal hygiene. People, come on, I mean, it's good for drag queens and, and ladies and all that stuff. It's all one, all one. It's all one. And I just want a little something for my hair. While Les wanted to help this woman, there was no way he would be able to take in human hair and sell it in his shop. Once the customer heard this, she started to raise her voice and demand Les to make an offer for her hair. But I just can't take it. Okay, you know, right? the hair. Come back oh, when you have. Les respectfully told the customer to calm down, but she had no interest in listening. Jewelry Karen. Hi. Hi. How can I help you today? This is a one of a kind. My boyfriend took me on an African safari. This is black platinum with onyx. A platinum? How much are we looking to get today? Well, he paid about $4,000 for it. It's not platinum. Excuse me? You sure? Yeah. Let me see. Heavy? Yeah. That mean? This next customer enters the pawn shop looking to get money for what she claims is one of a kind jewelry from Africa. When Ashley took a look at the item, she was swiftly able to realize that it was a fake. You're never gonna see one like this ever again. Just take another look. And you also said it was onyx? Yeah. So if it was onyx, it, I would see a stone in there. Oh. I see real, real platinum. Fake. You calling this fake? Sadly mistaken. Okay, maybe the A stands for S. Okay. Yeah. Can I no. see this for a second? Yeah, you can. Okay. Let me tell you something really quickly. This customer was contradicting herself, and it was clear as day she was trying to cheat the shop. Ashley wasn't going to let this slide, and told the customer straight up that it was a total fake. When somebody comes in my store, ask for Ashley. Ask for Ashley. Go touch oh. me, big bully. Here. I'll yeah, yeah. escort you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Got my real black black ass, Ashley. Oh my God. <laughs> Ashley wasn't going to let this customer disrespect her like that, so she confronted her face to face. Security soon escorted her out of the shop. Coat Karen. You can step up, ma'am. Yeah. I came to redeem my coat. Oh, my coat. Thank you. Thank you. I miss my baby. Where is my baby? Thank you. Oh, here, hon. Excuse me. This is not how I bought my coat in. How did you bring it oh, in? Oh, no. And everybody else. I bought my coat in smelling like rope. And this. The following customer goes to one of the windows to redeem her coat. This deal seemed to be going well, and the customer was excited to see her coat again. Things go downhill when the customer doesn't like the smell of the coat. Smell like booty? Oh, no. I don't want that. We gotta keep my coat with your dog. My coat's in storage, sweetheart. It was smelling like rose. I ain't gonna never come back up in here. I'll go, I'll go take care of that right Thank now. you, folks. Everybody, I run up out of here. Smell like Kill. Smell it now. The customer started to act like a total Karen and started screaming at Les. The customer claims that she bought the coat smelling like roses, but Les wasn't too convinced. Oh, Lord Jesus. I want my coat. Doesn't that on smell me. good? I think not. Follow me. Uh -uh. Let's, let's yeah, see. I will follow you. No, uh-uh. Not -uh. that okay. coat. That's not. We're going to keep this in the yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. When you get what your you membranes mean? together, you'll understand. This coat is just pathetic. And I'm going to blackball your bitch. Les decides to have some fun and let the customer sniff the coat again. The customer literally started losing her mind and started shouting at Les and the staff. It didn't take long for the security to kick her out of the shop. Pizza party. Hi. What can I help you girls with? We work in a daycare. So how much money are you guys looking for? 300. Games, giveaways, gift bags. So I'm going to be able to help you today. Not necessarily with 300. They're real earrings, they're real diamonds, but they're not gold. These next two customers were looking to get money in order to host a pizza party for the daycare they were at. Sadly, their items were not real. Okay, how well, much are we looking at? They're gonna be under $30. We're gonna need more than yeah. that. That's not enough. I think you need to put your listening ears on. Yeah. You sound a little cranky. Did you have any yeah, practice? You... Do we need to get your daddy over? Because you need to give us the 300 right now. I'm calling him to put us out. always on the stage right, right. You must yeah. smell like children. You're a real bitch. When Ashley gave these two customers a reasonable offer, they started to get extremely rude and said the most petty insults. Ashley wasn't going to do business with anyone who disrespected her, so she got security to kick them out. Doll Karen. 
Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm actually getting evicted from my apartment right now. So, what are you looking to do with? I'm looking to get $100. The guy actually kind of resembled the doll. So, how much did you want? Uh, $100 for it. We how about $10? What is $10 gonna do me? Even at $100. Help me move my out, it'll feed where? my dogs if I have to. This next customer was looking to get money for this really creepy doll that kind of looks like him. He wanted an absurd amount of money, but there was no money to be made. He got very disrespectful once Les gave him an offer. So the $10 would be a good start. What the do you mean? The $10 isn't gonna be Okay, well, $10 isn't gonna put gas in my tank now, is it? And start swearing at me. What are you doing? Well, I'm handing it back to you. No, we aren't done talking business. You're up in here disrespecting me, trying to hand my shit back to me. Don't tell me to go myself. Don't tell me to do things that that are really inappropriate. This customer was just being greedy and wasn't going to accept the $10 offer. Les didn't want to deal with this Karen anymore, so he tried to end the deal, but the customer was persistent and wanted some money. If I were to do this... What the f is your problem? Pick that up. Pick it up. Pick my doll up. Respecting us by screaming in front of all of our customers. Let's make this really quick. We're not interested. Oh, coming from the man who threw my No, I going. Who the f are you? Off me, bitch. You don't know me? You don't Les went beast mode and threw this customer's doll on the floor. This caused the customer to throw a massive tantrum as he started to yell at Les and the staff. Les quickly got the security to kick this annoying dude out of the shop. No, f you out the door. Ah, get off me! Everybody see this harassment! Felix was professional and escorted him out. I'm gonna be homeless. I'm gonna come up here and be homeless in here. I don't give a f this customer was just being way too desperate and annoying. New York Karen. I got a problem. I got a problem. Okay, well, wait a second. After, you after my, what? When you find my ring, you're not going to storm through my store. I'm not here to follow your rules. You're in my store. The pawn ticket? I lost the ticket. I was a customer here. I'm not going to be a customer again. Chill out. In Michigan? No, I'm from New York. In New York, we don't behave like this. This customer enters the pawn shop with a huge attitude. She claims that the shop has possession of her ring, but she clearly had no respect for Ashley and the staff. She was screaming at Ashley at the top of her lungs. Well, in Michigan, we act like humans. Where's your license? Take a look at it. So now you have my license. Yo, I'm from Brooklyn, girl. I'm from Detroit, girl. Oh, my God. God, you are one loud lady. Don't give me that look from the side of your eye. I know that look. How long does it take to check? I don't know. Well, do it already. You should have done it 10 minutes ago. It turns out that this customer was from New York, but that doesn't excuse her obnoxious behavior. Ashley tried to help her out, but the entire time she was just shouting insults at Ashley. This woman is like the textbook definition of a Karen. Loud noises make me type slower. <laughs> and she's not there. She's just not there. Are you kidding me? Like, you're really gonna talk to me like that? You can take your license and take it where the sun don't shine. If you wanna get in a screaming match with me, I'm gonna win. Goodbye. You. I know I brought my ring here. I remember the building. I'm not an idiot. Kiss it! Rich looked her up on the system, and she was nowhere to be found. This customer clearly wasn't thinking straight, and Ashley didn't hesitate to tell her to leave the shop. The two got into a screaming match, and it was extremely hilarious. Desperate women on hardcore pawn. Is Ashley in here? You sound like Ashley to me. I talked to somebody on the phone about my ring. You all said my ring is not here, so I need some answers. Loan. It was a loan. It was a loan. Do you have the receipt? No. First of all, you didn't talk to me. That's the first You sound thing. like the same person. Well, who the hell is Ashley? Her boyfriend came in with a receipt and I didn't give him his ring. The following customer was extremely upset as she tried to get her boyfriend to pick up her ring from the pawn shop. In a matter of seconds, the customer starts screaming, demanding to speak to Ashley. Lady, your boyfriend never came in. It's the same bitch so... that I talked to on the phone. Got a $20,000 ring up in here that y'all said you don't know. What do you need? I need my ring. Start from scratch. Plain is because you're going to have a dumb bitch here. Goodbye. You walking up on me for... Yo ass can get drunk too. You want to? I ain't seen you want to? You want to see it? Mama hey. told me don't hit like I said. It turns out that her boyfriend never even came to the pawn shop, so there was nothing Ashley could do. The customers still got extremely loud, and soon Ashley confronted them for causing a scene. The customers were promptly kicked out. Terrible service. Seriously, for real. Hello? I can't get nobody to help me? Like, this is crazy. You know how long I've been sitting here waiting? Uh, Straight up. Like, you laughing, but I'm dead serious. I've been in here for too long. What you mean? I'm sorry. No, y'all tripping. Like, look, look, less. Now everything's supposed to be all good. Now, who is you? I mean, what? You, you call backup? As soon as I get loud, here you come. 
This next customer started to get all riled up after she had to wait a couple minutes for some service. After a while, this customer started to raise her voice demanding to speak to an employee. That's when security steps in just in case. You can't do nothing with me, baby boy. Give me some feet, for real. Can you tell your boy to give me some feet? Well, just keep it adult, by the way. That's keep it adult? Are you serious? Keep it adult? Don't be sorry. Better yourself. Bitch. Bet you won't call me a bitch to my face. Can somebody help me? Where's the owner? Hello, the owner of the establishment. The security tried to cool this woman down, but this woman just wouldn't listen, nor did she have any form of respect for other people. It got to the point where even the other customers had to tell her to quiet down, and she did not take that well. You got your staff calling me bitches. No, there's another customer. Probably was your security guard that called me it a bitch. Wasn't. I was the one that came in here, tried to spend my money. I've been around the whole store. So you want to buy something? I did want to buy something. Where? It's a whole bunch of bullshit. Can you I get some help? Evidently, you, you don't. don't. Give me some feet. Give me some feet. Then you, you better move service. backwards. You know what the f are you going to Les tried to get this woman to calm down, but she refused to listen to anything Les had to say. She accused the employee of swearing at her, but the employee did not, and it was actually another customer who told her to quiet down and for good reason. Coat deal. Excuse me. I was trying to find my room. I was wondering if I can get five hundred dollars. She came in this time wanting five hundred. I have to move. I just really need the five hundred dollars. I can give me three twenty five, three thirty. That's really not gonna help me. Y'all okay. can't give me five hundred for my ring? No. That's not gonna help me. You try to help as many people as you can can help everybody that's sad the following lady entered the pawn shop looking to get some money for a ring she was looking to get an absurd amount of money for the ring and when ashley respectfully told her it wasn't worth as much as she thought she got very loud no i don't have your receipt i'm just dealing with the item Why yes. can't you just give me the five? that's not right I, I can't it. give I you something that it's I not worth. It was the least she'd take, 500, that was it? 500, she was not willing to budge anywhere. She'll be back. The customer attempted to guilt trip Ashley in an attempt to get more money. She was already getting an extra 100 bucks, but that wasn't enough. And now I'll go up to 350, but that's the highest I can go. Let's meet me at that window. I'm going to check your account. Let me see. I cannot believe she's back in already. 275, right? I, I mean, thought it was 37. No, it was 275. Yeah. yeah. I really gave you the max. That's I guess I got to take it. That's 75 more dollars than you normally get. Thank you. Soon enough, the customer returns to the shop hoping to land a better deal. This time around, she was much more reasonable and was actually able to work out a very good deal between her and Ashley, and things turned out well. Angry couple. I'm Seth. I'm Jerome, Seth. Jerome, nice to meet you. Man, we had a uh, break-in at the house, and we wanted to come up here and see if we had any of our items here. Nothing else in my house was touched, mm -hmm. okay? The people that are doing this, they've been to our house. I go to work every day. I work hard. If I give you these people's name, can you run their name and see if the PlayStation 3 under their name? I don't feel like being up here right now. I'm pissed off. Pissed That's off at the situation. situation. Right, I understand. Well, the following couple enters the pawn shop after their house was broken into. The robbers only stole the customer's PlayStation and knew the customer very well. They requested to see if the robber took their items to the pawn shop, but Seth said no. I'm not just going to run names. It creates a liability for me. If you go out and confront Joe Schmo, you guys get into a fist fight, it comes back on me. And I'm sorry, that's the only thing I can what do. Day I mean, that's are you going to be here? Maybe you don't understand how the loan process works. So you're getting all frustrated and bent out of shape. Suburbs, all right, all right. So your attitude? I, I, I'm sorry. So you're, so, you're, so you're not listening. You know, it's frustrating because I want to help these people out. If they had a PlayStation stolen. Seth refused to look up the other person because it could be a serious liability, but he still felt bad because he wanted to help out these customers, but there was really nothing he could do. He respectfully told the customers to file a police report. Attention seeker. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. I'm here to pawn my laptop. How can I help you? I'm Sarah. I'm bringing in a laptop. Okay. Kind of getting rid of old things. Right. Yeah, how much are you looking for? Five fifty. Five hundred. It's already a couple of years old. Looking about three hundred bucks. And I come home and everything's gone. Living and you're just me. taking care of I'm them. Taking care of. I'm going to be honest for a second. This customer was definitely attractive. She enters the pawn shop looking to pawn some items after she went through a rough breakup. Her ex-boyfriend took advantage of her financially, which was not cool. Not cool. I've been getting taken advantage of almost five years. I can give you 350 bucks. 350? 375? Four and a quarter, we have a deal. Is there anything else you trade for? I mean, I have no. diamonds. I need a new man. All she wanted was attention. I can't, I can't help you. Actually, Rich, Rich, <laughs> Rich might be, you know. What do we got going on? I got another man trying to take advantage of me over here. Seth gave the customer a pretty fair offer, but she didn't want to accept it. That's when the customer reveals her true intentions after she claims she needs a new man. Seth is a happily married man, so he got rich to talk to this woman. He can't handle when a, a, a decent looking woman starts hitting at him. Would he just take off or something? He told her to go out of town. She comes back. 
The house is empty. What else you buy? Watches, okay, huh? necklaces. Where are they all at? One thing was good. One thing was good. He's like a horse and got down like the rodeo. 425. We were at 450. I said we'll split. You said 450, and I said I'll split the difference. Thanks, guys. There you go. Sounds good. Rich was literally blushing as this woman was hitting on him. Even Rich admits that the customer is attractive. The customer was looking to get a lot of money so she could flex on her ex-boyfriend, and eventually they were able to land a deal. The Riz. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Trying to get rid of some things. I was about 415. So four hundred fifteen dollars. Four hundred fifteen. We actually have the four hundred piece. Four hundred piece. This is lamb. This is lamb. This oh. isn't lamb. That is lamb. That's not lamb. I'm not gonna take that coat. Um, I'll take this one. Forty dollars. Forty dollars. What D? Are you serious? Let me see. I know to fifty. Me too fifty. The following customer had some bills to pay and was looking to get an absurd amount of money for what she claims is an authentic lamb coat. Ashley knew this customer wasn't all there and offered a much lower amount for her items. One hundred fifty. I can't. Pay me eighty dollars. I can't. So you can. How's that come? You can count on two little two eyes. Come on, look, run it, 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 when security stepped in, the woman got very flirty with him and even said she wanted to climb up on him. Luxury bags. Hello. Hi, how are you today? So I have a few Louis Vuitton purses. I love limited edition bags. And then this one right here, this is a vintage bag. For the right price, I know they'll fly off my shelves. I have about 45 bags. So how much are you looking to get today? Maybe 1400 do you really think you can get full value for this? I know that it can be sold. The following customer was looking to get some money for some high-end bags she had. The customer was looking to get crazy amounts of money for these bags, and that's when Ashley had to tell the customer that the bags were not worth much. You don't think so? 100% not true. I always know I'm getting the authentic thing. Don't you know that they should be kept in their dress bags? Oh, in no, I understand that. Absolutely. Do so. you have the receipt? No, I don't. I would have to say a thousand. It's going to be out of my ballpark, but there is a lot of wear and tear on this. 350 on this one? That's not going to work, but unfortunately not on this. That's when the customer claims she spent hours upon hours researching these bags, but from what she was saying, this clearly wasn't true. Additionally, she didn't have any receipt for these bags and got mad when Ashley gave her a fair offer. On this bag is 600. I can go up to four, and I can do 200 on this one. If you could do 800 for both, I would. It would be a at least 11, 1200 dollars. Not in my store, I can't. I'm really being firm at 600. I just can't. Want to meet in the middle? What's the middle? Si 650. Let's do it. Okay. I gotta give you credit, you're a good negotiator. <laughs> the customer isn't very happy with any of Ashley's offers, but through some fierce negotiating, the two were able to land on a price that worked for the two of them. This proved that Ashley was a fairly good negotiator. Desperate deal. Hi ladies. I brought a uh, Minnie Mouse and a Mickey Mouse. They are solid wood, very high quality, hand painted. They're probably worth a lot of money. I know that Mickey and Minnie sold in pairs, antique like that. But the thing is, somebody could have made them. You don't necessarily know how old they are. Um, how much are you looking for? 2000 How do you figure that? The following customers bring in a massive Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse wood statue, which they boldly claim is worth a lot of money. Les was very skeptical about this statue, but things got worse when they revealed how much they wanted. It, it's hard to find anything like them. You have no idea who did it? $75. $75 for these? Oh, yeah. No. yeah. They're very cool. I like them. 500 bucks? We don't have to buy every item that comes to the door. We'll take them off your hands. Five crisp $100 bills right now. I think you'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I'll go five and a quarter. You got a deal. Thank you so much. Mickey and Minnie Mouse. Ashley was rightfully skeptical, and considering the fact that they had no proof that the item was worth anything, Ashley offered them a fair price. But of course, the customers didn't like it. Les, on the other hand, seemed to be interested in the item. TV trouble. Hello. I need some money to get my car fixed. So, how much are you looking to get today? 200 for it. Can't give you 200. No. They sell it for 125 This lady walks into the store with an already existing attitude for no reason. She meets Ashley, who immediately wants to help her out. No, that's not what she told me. So I will be receiving 200 Yeah. Is that when you problem? start demanding well, things? I'm going to demand what I fear. Uh, no, what you can do is lower you your voice in my store. Just lower your voice. I'm the customer. You see here, and I'm, you're going to put up with my How much you want to bet? When Ashley tells her that she can't offer the lady what she's asking for, all hell breaks loose. This woman's not going to take no for an answer, and Ashley just doesn't know how to deal with her unreasonable demands. So I will be receiving $200. Yes. Her aunt owed her money. I don't want to leave until I get the $200. I need to be quiet for like nothing. two seconds. I ain't got to be quiet. Nothing can no, you no, shut no. your mouth. I don't even know why I'm arguing with her because I have nothing else to say to her. I'm going to take 
Save your TV right out the door. Get trip. it out for yeah. me. If you go in the rain, you're going to pay for it. No, you're not going to sit here and do that. Bitch, you're going to pick my TV up. Turns out this lady might have been scammed by her own aunt. And there's no way Ashley is paying the price for that. In fact, she's so done with this crazy woman that she picks up the TV herself to escort this insane lady outside. You pick up your own TV. I pick, up. pick up my motherfucking TV. So who's gonna be the one to pick it up? Bye. No, I'm not going anywhere. I'll spare tire ass. F you. Well, f get your hair done, bitch. And then she just leaves it there? What the f you really have to salute the audacity this woman has, because even after she's practically been kicked out of the pawn shop, she demands that someone comes out and carries her TV for her. Foe or Fox? Oh, man. Hi, Shannon. How much would you give me for this? At least a thousand. thousand. It's very pretty. You can't sell them for that kind of money. So how much would you give me? I can give you a hundred. It's another crazy day at American Jewelry and Loan when this lady walks in wanting to pawn off her coat. She's met with Les, who's obviously more than ready to help her. A hundred for this mother coat? I want more than a hundred. Feel how good this feels. Okay, you got me up. This is a rabbit, a bird, whatever the I want it to be. You're more than a dollar. What the a dollar? He's my fur expert. When Les offers her a fair price, she starts throwing a tantrum asking Les to feel the coat and see just how luxurious the mink is. And you know Les, he's nothing if not an expert at these things. He not no mother ass expert. I'm not going home with no money. For a hundred dollar coat, we're not gonna do it. I need rent money. You gotta call security up in this bitch. You mother security too? Oh! Y'all mother don't know who y'all went up in here. It's a mink, baby. You see a lot of strange things at American Jewelry. Oh boy. This wild customer then starts getting disrespectful to one of Les's employees. And that's when he knows that it's time for her to go. Of course, her drama continues well until she's out of the pawn shop because she refuses to believe that her coat is anything but mink. Declined card. Uh, 14 carat, 11 and a half grams, good deal. So I'm gonna get you rode up, take you to the window. Hey girl. Hey. My anniversary. Yeah, congratulations. Yes. Do a debit or credit? Do debit. Can't wait. It declined, I'm sorry. It declined. This lady is at the store buying what seems to be a ring for herself. Rich helps her out and sends her to the counter to pay. Of course, the lady is pretty excited, talking all about how it's her anniversary that day. Do it again. It's money on there. Decline. Do it credit. If it declined, debit. Decline. It ain't declined. Try it again. No, I want to hit it. It's my anniversary. The lady immediately starts throwing a tantrum, saying that there's money on her card. She demands that the employee at the counter try for credit. Hi, can I help you? Is there an issue? Now I asked her to swipe my card. Swipe my card again. I don't care about what it's charged, y'all. Y'all making money in here. Listen to me. No, you listen to me. No, you listen to me. No, you listen to me. Ashley has to step in to try and explain that swiping the card again and again won't work because the machine just keeps declining it. You get smart because you're behind this window. I ain't leaving till y'all swipe my card. She gonna swipe my card before I leave here. And I want you to swipe my card. Come on. Now what you gonna do? Because I'm not about to go nowhere. Don't be standing up here looking like you hard, baby. I'll take some with the lady then starts demanding that Ashley comes out from behind the counter and swipes her card right in front of her. But that's obviously not going to happen. And Ashley comes outside to talk to her face to face. Commitment issues. How you guys doing? You guys need some help? You're looking for a promise ring? This is kind of like antique design. Yeah, I like this. That's me 350 bucks. This couple walks into the store looking for a promise ring. And right off the bat, Seth has a bad feeling about this guy. Seth shows the couple a bunch of options. Think about a uh, trade-in. No, no, no. Come on, man. I bought you. No, would you, no, no. Would you chill? Did you get her these? Yeah, yeah, he bought me those Valentine's Day. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of earrings they are. He told me he spent a thousand. You spent a thousand, right? Right. They're not real. That's when the lady makes a proposition to do a trade-in. And since that's something the pawn shop does regularly, Seth is pretty open to it. So the girl starts taking her earrings off to trade them in for the ring. They're not real. No. Tell my they are real. So you mean you lied to me? You don't know what you're talking he about. I don't know what I'm talking, talking about. about. Why would you buy me some fake swear. earrings? So I'll just no, put this no, away. No, fake ass no, earrings? Please stay away. Fake ass earrings? Let's do hey, How about you guys just take it outside? Soon enough, the cat's out of the bag. While this dude told his girlfriend that he spent $1,000 on these earrings, Seth lets her know that they aren't worth anything at all. Usually I'm the recipient of the wrath. Don't touch me. Do not touch me. I'm, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. I swear I should have knew better. I don't even feel bad about with his brother now. 
Their little couple's quarrel goes on until they're outside the store, and for a while, you really empathize with the poor lady. Mystery purse. Excuse me. Okay, I went to get my purse back. That's my purse right there. That one right there is the black one. This lady walks into American Jewelry and Loan, and she seems a bit frazzled. Ashley spots her, and once the two start talking, This is your purse. That's my purse right there. Because I know my purse. I want the purse. That bad? If you don't give me the purse, I'm going to climb over the counter and get it myself. How are you? Would you mind getting over there and get my purse for me? That purse has been out there. Let me see it. Let me look at it. Not That's first of all, don't talk to me like I'm a and idiot. Now, Ashley knows that this chick is lying because the purse that she claims is her was never in pawn. But the woman goes on with her story, claiming that Ashley is wrong and that really is her purse. That's not your purse. Give me my purse. Okay. Oh my God. Chef, you know you just hit me with that pole, right? Go. Bitch. Oh, you... No receipt customers on hardcore pawn. Why should I have to pay you anything extra? But the policy is it right? He doesn't have his receipt, and it clearly states on the receipt that there's a dollar service charge. But I don't want to pay you any extra. All right. Bring me the receipt. Well, then you got to give me my product. I don't have to do anything. You, you're taking a dollar from me by trickery. My trickery. Oh, you $71? Take your $71. The following customer was looking to redeem his item, but he didn't have a receipt and needed to pay a $1 fee. This caused the customer to literally lose his mind and throw a huge fit. Plus a dollar service charge for not having a receipt. Not a if I don't have the receipt, then it's a dollar. Well, there's nothing to sign. So you're going to say, F me as a customer that has been buying for you for 10, 12 years. I right, take the dollar and I don't want to do no more business with you. Time is money. And because of that, we charge him a buck. But for a dollar, that's what you're going to do to me? As much? Rich respectfully told the customer that he needed to pay a $1 service fee because he didn't have his receipt. The customer genuinely felt betrayed by this since he's been loyal to the pawn shop for years and less got involved. Hey, when, when loan me a dollar, then. Give me a dollar. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the dollar. If you don't have your receipt, it's a dollar. It will never be explained. It was worth it to me to give him the dollar right out of my pocket. You said something to me. Okay. There's your receipt. All right, buddy. And it's not just a dollar. It's, 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 it's the principle. The customer seriously caused such a massive scene over one dollar. But Les did everything in his power to calm down this customer. Les ended up giving the customer the dollar since he's been loyal to the shop for years. And Les wanted to be on good terms. Receipt drama. Hi. I came in here Saturday and the lady didn't give me a copy of my receipt. I bought them and I didn't get a receipt because I was trying to find them. Are you asking for the receipt for the purchase or the pawn? For the purchase? You know, the lady was confused. You know, let me try to help you. Do you have ID? Can I look at the computer system? I pull up her name. I don't have anything active in your name at all. The following customer enters the pawn shop looking to get a copy of a receipt. Apparently, the staff didn't give her a receipt as she was trying to pawn off her items. Ashley looked up the customer on the system and nothing was found. I find stuff here all the time. Don't tell me that you don't have anything here. I don't even I have, have you in my pawn. system. I see y'all playing games. That's her right there. Which one is she? That lady right there. She wants to catch my for herself, but she didn't have my earring. You know you have my earring, and y'all playing games. I want my stuff. The customer insisted that she pawned her item at the pawn shop, but Ashley tried to explain to her that she was nowhere on the system. That's when the customer snapped and started looking for the shop employee that dealt with her. Have you ever pawned them before that day? Not here, no. I've been coming here for many years. This lady was obviously confused because she didn't pawn it here. I must need to speak to the owner or somebody. All right, talk to us. Somebody is responsible for my earring. You are, and we don't have them. She has them. Call them police right here. She may have pawned them at another pawn shop. Accusing my employee, stealing her earrings, ain't gonna fly. Ashley attempted to keep her composure and it seems like the customer was at the wrong pawn shop. Even when Ashley was trying to help out the customer, she still kept on being extremely rude and demanded to speak to the owner of the shop. Them bull they gonna just keep my mother earrings. Phone receipt. Hey, what's up? I just got this phone that I bought here. This don't work. Did you download a camera function? No, it clearly got a camera. I need a new phone, dog. Okay, you got your receipt? No, I ain't got it with me. I ain't bring it. I'm not giving them without a receipt. As soon as you give me that receipt, I can see what I can do for you. I don't have my receipt. I just clearly told you. There's nothing I can do for you. And getting just irate give with me, me is phone. not gonna help you out. The following customer enters the pawn shop, claiming a phone he recently purchased from the pawn shop stopped working and wanted to get a new one. When Rich asks if he had a receipt, the customer said no, and things got hectic. Who sold the phone to you in the first place? Somebody. 
He here. Yeah, you. You sold me this phone right here, like two days ago. We haven't had one of those off for sale since I've been here. I'm not the one being ridiculous here. Clearly, he can't come up with a receipt. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming on over here. You can go back to selling. Man, you and your mohawk, shut the hell up, too. Now the goatee does talk. Damn. And you don't want him to start talking. Anyone with any form of common sense would be able to tell that this customer was lying through his teeth. He took things to a whole another level when he accused one of the employees of selling it to him, and he soon got exposed. The goatee is the manager. Get the hell out of here. Y'all got all these phones right here. Do Clearly that can't hear me. Do this yeah. phone work? Simple question. Can you go show him how it works? My phone, show, show him how the phone works outside. Don't touch me then. I'm gonna be back. I'm coming for my money. It couldn't have been no manager. Not looking like that. I mean, you need to get that cut. The customer couldn't control his temper and started to freak out in the middle of the pawn shop. The customer started to insult Rich's appearance as he was getting kicked out of the shop by security for his reckless behavior in the shop. Ring pawn. Hi, how are you today? I want to pawn this. My house got robbed and my car won't start. The motor go. Really? I want to see if I can get like 1100 for this. I don't want nothing lower. I just want that. I bought them for my wedding. They were nice rings. So you won't take anything less than 1100 No. Sorry. The following customer was in a tough time as her house just got robbed and lost her TV and all her valuables. She was looking to get substantial money for her wedding rings, but when Les took a deep look at the rings, he knew it wasn't worth much. Well, you said this you can't take less than 1100 okay. I understand. Okay, everybody in this mother place got a good deal. That's what the First, I uh, want. My house got robbed. You think I'm supposed to take lower than that? I want a deal, and you're not giving it. No, you give it to me, you give it to me now. No, you ain't no sorry. Take that. Time to leave. Oh, don't, don't, don't touch me. I came in here by myself. That's when the customer started to raise her voice and straight up told Les that he was trying to cheat her. Les did not hold back and told the customer she was crazy, and that's when she started freaking out and security stepped in. Don't on, touch me. I'm leaving like this. F off. Thank you. Just do it. Have a nice day. Yeah. This place. Hey, kiss my ass. This customer was definitely on the weirder side and everyone knew that she was no match against the shop's security. Earring receipt. Hi, how are you? My niece bought me some earrings from here. Oh, that was nice. Bought, and I get my money back. Did she have the uh, receipt? No, well this one didn't. She told you that um, she bought them from us? Yes. So there's two problems here. The first problem, you don't have the receipt. I yeah. know what a receipt would look like if I had one. It says no cash refunds. The following customer enters the pawn shop with earrings she claims her niece got from the shop. She claims that the earring was missing a diamond and demanded to get her money back, but because she had no receipt, she wasn't able to. These are fake. We don't sell fake jewelry. Oh, okay. gonna be Hold some up, in here. Don't get no more jewelry from hey. here because this hey. ain't good. Hey. I played this game before. I know this was a scam. Talking Sir, to you. can you help me? Can you give me my money? No. Here's your your short ass no. gonna tell me. Are you angry because your coat's so tight? You so much little back to, there. I think it's time to leave. We didn't sell them. Get out of here. Get out of the store. Two options. In addition to the customer not having any form of receipt, the item she bought in was a total fake, and it was clear as day she did not purchase this earring from the shop. The customer started to get extremely loud. You can leave. No, I ain't Second going nowhere. Can you finish finish me? No, no. I think no. it's time to leave. I'm not going nowhere. This is Joe. Joe. Get your hands off. I guess you leave. Uh, I'll be, I'll be back. Bobby J. Yeah, it's true. Maybe he, if you sit on the toilet, his legs swing. The customer just wasn't able to handle reality, and that's when she started insulting Bobby J was just trying to help her out. But she would inevitably get kicked out of the shop by security for loud and disruptive behavior. TV receipt. Man, how you doing, brother? What's the deal on this TV here? $400. I'm going to tell you a little something. I was in here two weeks ago. Sold you this mother Oh, you're making a $310 profit off me. Bull how can I help you? Who are you, man? I come in here two weeks ago with ninety dollars, man, and then y'all gonna sell it for four hundred? You gonna make that much profit? I don't believe the guy's story. I know his game. He just wants a TV for nothing. The following customer angrily enters the pawn shop and walks right up to one of the TVs on display. He claims that he pawned the TV a couple weeks ago for ninety bucks, and he started to freak out as he accused the shop of ripping him off. I'll just take the TV, man, and I'll be gone. I, I would like to see you try. Who are you, Green Mile? You're talking a lot, and they're not gonna be happy. I ain't going nowhere till I get this TV. No. This guy was acting like a total baby. I'll never be back here. Promise? This place, man. Seth rightfully didn't believe a word this guy said, and when he asked him for a receipt, he had nothing to show. This grown man was begging for attention like he was some sort of toddler, and Seth got the security to kick this man out. Generator receipt. That motherfucking generator started working in the middle of the night. Whose ass is? That's not the problem. Yeah. Now it doesn't even come on. It went off in the middle of the night. So it, as, as is, is, does it encompass the 
for thing. six hours. It ain't supposed to stop working, working, working now. It no, it was receive. as is, dog. It's as is. I'm not about to leave this bitch. That's some whole ass <laughs> real <laughs> talk. The following customer starts causing a scene after he purchased a generator from the shop that broke down. Rich calmly tried to explain that he purchased the generator as is, but this dude simply refused to listen to anyone. You're gonna have a no, problem. you gonna have a Real talk. You back there and you got these motherfuckers. Come out here. He go, he go, he wanna come out here like he did. We can talk like man, a man. You, you wanna start screaming and though. yelling? Wanted to talk like money, a jackass. Y'all ain't. Sir, I ain't get in the uproar until he started yelling. I got kids me, at home. The customer got all up in Rich's face, who was just trying to help him out. He made this mistake of threatening Rich, which inevitably got the attention of security, who did not hesitate to throw this loudmouth customer out of the shop. Shut off. Now I won't start up. Normally, we don't do anything for the customer. So I brought out one of my repairmen to see what the problem really was all about. Oh. Lo and behold, it works. Never checked the oil when I bought it. Should have checked the oil. They fixed it and I'm happy. Les saw this whole thing play out, and he made the effort to work things out with the customer since he was a loyal customer, and Les didn't want to lose him. It turns out that the customer's item worked all along, and things got resolved. Console receipt. Where the f case at? Where the f case at? Where is it at? He put them up in there. That's the way it came in with the kids. That's the way it came in. He's accusing us of taking games. People try to pull this scam all the time. Now, I know they ain't talk and they scratch. At that point, man, you, you, can, you can get your arms up off me, man. After all the stress, I have over this big event. This next customer starts causing a scene, claiming that the shop stole his games, but Les knew this guy was just a desperate liar. His console never had games in it, and Les was in zero mood to deal with such annoying customers in the morning. The last thing I need is a customer causing a scene. And y'all motherfucking rip offs in my man you know he put them up games. Somebody need to blow this place up. Go. It's time to go, sir. Uh, can I get my weed? He'll get it for you, don't worry. You're making a threat like that? To blow up my place? The customer took it too far when he made a serious threat to the shop, and in a matter of seconds, security kicked this dude out of the shop. Watch drama. You know, I want to pound his watch. I want about 200 for it. So you got your receipt, I can give you 40%. I bought it like two months ago. Can you give me 200 for it? I paid $300 for it. Here you go. Can I help you? I paid, can I, help? I paid $300 for this watch. Y'all charge us because all this we, money for we, these watches. But we do give you a percentage. A percentage? I want my money. The following customer enters the pawn shop looking to pawn a watch. He claims he got a substantial amount of money for the watch in the past, but he didn't have the receipt to back it up. The customer asked an unrealistic amount. I'm saying no money. Can you get Tyson. for your? Q&E. It's some bull man. Give me my money. Sir, Give me... I don't see anything on your account. Man, come on, man. What you can do is find me a receipt. I had a receipt. I lost the receipt. Can you stop pounding on our counter? I want $200. Or you can come back the with I the receipt. I want $200. That. I want my $200 for the watch. The customer started to get loud, and that's when Ashley stepped in to see what was going on. Ashley was able to look up the customer in the system, and it turns out that he had nothing on his account. Things got even more hectic. Come yeah, back when you have your receipt. I'll show you what $200 is. See, man, threatening oh, me is on, not going to get saying, far though, here. If you're going to keep screaming, I'm not even going to deal with you. Why not? Oh, come on, man. That's some bull, man. Come on, pay $300 for this watch. That's some whole ass shit. Man, man, see, man, I, now you see security all in my face. I ain't got no car. I'm catching the bus. Ashley respectfully told the customer to come back when he had the receipt. And that's when the dude started losing his mind, causing a scene in the middle of the pawn shop. We all knew that this dude was no match against the security. Confusion, confusion. Hey. Hello, how are you? And I had got my TV out of pawn, and I need the receipt. We don't give out receipts. When we give you your item, that's your receipt. That's proof that you paid to take it out. We don't give out receipts. Y'all give out receipts. I do business with y'all all the time. You're sure you're at the right place? This lady is at a counter in the pawn shop asking for a receipt. Pretty normal, right? Except she's looking for a receipt that shows she got her item back from the pawn. Bitch, give me my mother receipt. We do not give you a receipt. This is not retail. It was already their item. I'm giving it back to them. My man needs to know what the f I spent my money on. I want my mother receipt. We don't give our receipts. As patient as the employee is trying to be with this lady, she just doesn't respect it at all. Soon enough, she's yelling the whole shop down, demanding to get a receipt. Stop, beat your mother ass. Your mama look nice. Can you give me my receipt? Bitch, I ain't got time to play with your ass. What up, dog? I'm here. Can I get my receipt? My man wants to know what the I've been doing. Look in the computer. Bitch, I burn this mother down. Things escalate when this lady starts to threaten the employee, saying that she's going to beat her up. And that's when Les walks out from behind the counter to deal with this crazy customer. It's time for your ass to get out of bitch, here. Get your ass out of here. You better get your ooh, bitch. Ooh, oh, bitch. No, the oh, okay. Bitch, and you. Bitch, I want my 
Raising your voice does not get you better service. Y'all don't know who the f- my people is. Bitch. Bitch. That's when Les can't take the drama anymore and immediately calls security to kick her to the curb. But of course, this crazy woman isn't going down that easy. She makes sure to throw one final tantrum before being escorted out of the store for good. DVD drama. And I need some service over here to buy some shit that don't work. My done bought five DVDs, don't none of the work. Yeah, you ever see? Y'all gotta do something about the deal, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man, that's five movies. Hold on, bro, I ain't said nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? I put one CD in and it All didn't right, work, you know let's what I'm see. Let's see, let's see whether it works. This man walks into the store, and let me tell you, he is a certified yapper because he doesn't stop talking for a single second. Les actually has to insert himself in the conversation this man seems to be having with himself to see what the problem is. I give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, okay, so the movie worked here then. They don't work. They work. Y'all got yeah, me, man. Yeah, you're gonna shake out of here, man. You're trying to return them on me, bro. and it's not gonna work because we don't play that it's game. Bust some bull Dog. If they really worked in my house, bro, you think I'd be standing right here causing the scene or about this? For starters, the dude doesn't seem to have the receipt. And guess what? The minute Seth plugs them in, the DVDs seem to be working just fine. And because this man knows he's been caught in a major lie, he starts getting riled up. I tested one and it worked. Then, dog, it ain't gonna happen, man. Y'all gonna hear from me again. Bro. Looking forward to it. That's how you put it. At the end of the day, this lying customer realizes that his antics aren't going to get him too far. Watch receipt. Hi, how are you? I bought this watch from you guys a couple days ago and it's not working. I need my money back. Do you have your receipt? I do not. Why? Where'd it go? How'd you pay? Cash. Cash. I spent a lot of f- money on it. I would appreciate you didn't, you didn't swear at me. I'm a little frustrated. I spent a few thousand dollars. This is the box that came in? Yeah. Okay. The following customer enters the pawn shop upset, claiming that he just recently purchased a watch from the store that stopped working. He was looking to get a full refund, but he conveniently didn't have any form of receipt. Your contacts? You can see well, right? This is sad. This is bull****. You guys must have ripped me off. Why don't you back up out of my face? Come here. Well, I'm going to show you where your Rolex is. I'm going to show you exactly where your Rolex is. So come on. I thought I worked your f- face. I thought I worked your face. Get the f- off. This customer was an absolute clown. He didn't even put any effort in making his lies believable. His watch wasn't even a Rolex, and the customer got exposed right in front of everyone. I'm trained in different martial arts. I want what I paid for. Here you go. We do not take threats lightly. Come on. This dude just had zero shame and security humbled right there. Speaker receipt. Um, can I speak to your manager? Hey, bud, what's up? Dan, the speaker's blown. They just coming in now. Like, he test them out right there. And they're working. Sticker, kind of what kind of sticker? Y'all got a sticker on the other box. Because so it wasn't blown. Watch. Return them. Well, I just need to see the receipt. Oh, wait, I don't have the receipt at all. Oh, you don't have the receipt. I want to see a receipt. I want to make sure that they actually purchased the item from us. The following group of teens walk into the pawn shop looking to return a speaker they allegedly purchased from the pawn shop that broke shortly after buying it. When Seth asked for their receipt, they came up with a bunch of excuses. I don't know. If you change the speakers inside, there's no return policy on them. I'm not giving you no receipt. I just told you. Can I get some money back? I'll buy the box for 10 bucks. Bucks, well, you just said some money. I'm buying the box no, back. No, then I can give you 10 bucks. No, 15. 10. No, so, so you so want 10 bucks? Yeah, 10 bucks. And then they have the audacity to get the money and then go talk to Les. The customers didn't have the receipt, so there was no way for Seth to know whether they actually purchased it from the shop. Additionally, they purchased the speakers in as-is condition, so there was really nothing Seth could do. I just bought some speakers here. They walk over to me. Okay, I knew I won't get all my money back. The dude only gave me $10. I resolve it in 20 seconds. They end up leaving. Seth offered to purchase the speaker for 10 bucks, and the customers obviously said no to this, so they went to Les. Credit button. I just want to pay for my sh- the lady told me to go right here to the first window. I'm gonna pay on my damn jewelry, not where the f- I go. And we allow the customers to come here. Stop I wanna come here. yelling at where me. Where do I go? She ranted and raved. Give me my job, I wanna pay my entrance. I didn't wanna come to this place. This window's closed. You're going to have to wait. The following customer angrily enters the pawn shop as she tries to pay off her interest. American Jewelry and Loan acquired another pawn shop, so the customers from that pawn shop had to come to American Jewelry and Loan. I want to pay my entry. Disrespect me, I want to disrespect you. Rude. What were you doing today, ma'am? My jewelry was f***ing sent here. You start hollering. We're okay. going to start all over again. Oh, $49. This gentleman right here. Ma'am, you were yelling at me. Les wasn't going to allow any customer to abuse him, so he got Amber to deal with this insufferable customer. Credit must be given to Amber since she was able to keep her composure. I'm late for work. Like <laughs> me. I wouldn't. I agree. You probably ain't got what yes. it takes. Okay, we appreciate that. Inappropriate items on Hardcore Pawn. 
When I think I've seen it all, somebody comes in with something, surprises the out of them. I've got some bondage gear that I'd like to sell. Yeah. Okay. You want me to show you what I got? Clamps. I'm upgrading some of my equipment, and so I thought I'd get a few bucks. I could tell the staff wasn't used to my kind of equipment coming in. And, uh, some handcuffs. The following customer enters the pawn shop with an array of different items that surprised less in the staff. This is definitely one of the weirdest items we have ever seen featured on the show. Oh, I've got the leg irons. This is okay. a very nice leather floor. Oh, I'm supposed to say, man, I have another. All of this stuff, at least 250 How long have you been doing that? Doing it professionally for about four years. You have a tool belt? Oh, yeah. Perfect. That we would think. Did you always have a desire for this? I was a sergeant in the Army. Thank, Thank you for coming in. Wow, what a grip. The customer was looking to get an absurd amount of money for these items that Les had zero interest in displaying in his shop. The customer reveals they used to be a carpenter, and Les was in shock at hearing all of this information. Inappropriate deal. Hi. Pawn some panties. Okay. They, they have tags on it and everything. I haven't worn them. No, I, ha I have a little donk. I have a little bit back there. When I think of Ashley, of course, everybody thinks she's a bitch. But I wouldn't have her change at all. What do you do? About 365 pairs? One for every day that you her? I have a very bad fetish. I got my fetish for my granny. What are you looking for? For all Um. The following customer was looking to get some money for a bunch of clothing she had. She claims that she never wore these clothes before, but Ashley still can't help but feel disgusted upon seeing it. Things would soon get very hectic. At least 50 pairs. Here, so at least seventy-five dollars. You can sell them. People that don't have no underwear. There's hair on them. I can't do it. What I'm do sorry. You think? I have a brush in the bag. I can't do it. How do you know nobody else? Because I'm not going to sit here and display underwear, and I'm not interested in pawning them. I'm not interested. You know, End of story. But enough said. Let me explain something to you that'll end this whole discussion. The customer was looking to get an absurd amount of money for all her underwear, and Ashley wasn't going to sell such items at her shop. That's what causes a massive argument between Ashley and the customer, and Les had to step in. We don't take underwear and pawn, and we don't buy them. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We told you. No, he told me. And I also told you. No, no, no you didn't. It's I think fine. it's time to go. Have a good day. Oh, I will. I was going to get ethnic on her, but I, I did it. I did. Who does this bitch think she is? And shove the underwear down her throat. That was disgusting. We need Counterclean. You okay, Dad? I'm exercising. Les calmly explained to the customer that the shop doesn't accept these types of items. Right before she leaves, the customer makes sure to insult Ashley. And at this point, Ashley tells this customer to leave the shop before things get messy. Body vibrator. Hey, how you doing? Hi. This is a whole body vibration machine. I went from a size 10 to a size 2. I'm 61. I was hoping that I could show you how fabulous I really do look. You want to get undressed? Though? I don't care. You're so petite. Now, how this works, you're not shaking. The following customer was looking to get money with what she claims is a body vibrator meant for weight loss. I ain't going to lie. Even though this customer was 61, she still looked amazing, and she got the attention of all the boys. Tight, tighten. It's a dollar to stand on this side. Okay. okay? You feel younger today, don't you, Henry? Well, now I'll yeah, take the dollars out. And it works the face muscles too, by the way. It's such a great machine. How much do you want for this? 2700 I work out every day, and I have worked out on one of those machines in the past. I'm going to be completely honest. I was having the time of my life while making this video, and the customer definitely impressed everyone at the shop. Les loved the machine, and he even gave it a try himself, and the customer stated how much she wanted. She wanted too much money. So what's the least you take for it? 2400 I can't see a benefit to me, okay. so I'm sorry. That is an awesome price for my machine. I'm not gonna shell out of that much for a vibrator. Unfortunately, the customer was looking to get an unrealistic amount of money for this machine, and no deal was made between her and Les. Inappropriate book. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? Dennis, mm -hmm. nice to meet you, Kat. Tell me what you got. Well, she look at I'm gonna open up volume 15 if that's okay with you. Well, it's called Man and Woman, the Encyclopedia of Adult Relationships. Bought him from an estate sale. All he could look at were the pictures. Where's the sex? How much did you want? I would like to get $200. And how did you come up with that number? Um, well, I don't know. This next customer brings in a bunch of books that detail the intimate relationships between man and woman. Les and the staff were just confused by this book, and it had some crazy stuff in it. The customer was looking for big money. You no, know, I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. <laughs> for good reason. We have a pawn shop. We're not a triple X porno store. Store. They're great books. The pictures are great. This reminds me of when I was 20. The problem is... And they open this up and, oh, look, a wiener. There are some people standing over there. Let's see what they think. And if you came into a pawn shop, would you go up to it and go, wow, boobies? 
When Les asked her why the books were worth as much as she said, she didn't really have an answer. Les was not too sure whether customers were looking for these types of books, but just to be sure, he asked some customers in the shop. Would you spend $20 on a book? I want the real thing. I don't want the book. Okay, thank you very much. How much would you take for them? Well, I would take no less than 100 My daughter-in-law wants them really, really bad. Her son is not fulfilling his obligation. This really isn't for us. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. If it was the 70s, I would have sold these books. Kids just go on the internet. Surprisingly, some customers were actually somewhat interested in this collection of weird books, and Les was genuinely surprised. Regardless, a pawn shop is no place to sell these types of items, so Les and the customer couldn't make a deal. Weird machine. Hi. I'm gonna cure your syphilis. You're gonna what? Cure your syphilis. You interested in what's in the mystery box? No. This is called the Violet Ray device. From the 20s to about the 50s, sold as a cure-all. So tell me a little bit about it. How long have you owned it? Collect medical antiques, so. Oh, you feel like getting zapped, uh, buddy? The following customer was a cardiologist and had a machine that he claims can cure a deadly disease. The customer collects mechanical antiques and was looking to get big money for this machine, but Les and Ashley were skeptical. Okay, come here. Well, let me turn it up a little bit. No, I don't zap them that hard. Huh? It feels like a tattoo. What do I want the syphilis cure? I, 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 I don't know. How much are these things worth? A couple hundred to 500 or so. I hope to get about 300 out of it. If it's worth, if it's worth 200, 200, why am I giving you 300? Three. I mean... It's very cool, and I, you know, if I had syphilis... This machine emitted this really sketchy-looking purple shock. Ashley and Les had no interest in testing it out, but they were able to get security to try it. The customer then reveals he was looking to get crazy amounts of money for this item. If I had syphilis, I would be more than happy to buy it from you. Um, so I'm sorry, we just wouldn't be interested. Any scarificators or bleeding devices, anything like that, old surgical equipment? I have a gynecologist table. Hell no! <laughs> Just when you thought this dude couldn't get any more weird, he starts asking if the shop has any bleeding devices out of all things. Toilet. <laughs> you want to sell the truck? Looking to pawn the toilet? I got a little toilet paper coming in. He needed to pay for his large order of toilet paper. Brand new, they're about $1,500. I need about $700. This is top of the line. It's, it's got a sink in it. Come on, that's top of the line. Wow, we. The following customer was in urgent need of money as he was looking to place a big order of toilet paper, which is pretty funny. The customer claims that this toilet is in high demand and asked for a crazy amount, but Les was rightfully suspicious. Right. Yeah, three months to get it back. I don't know. You get it back anytime within three months. So anyway, we'll give you 150. 150 is a great deal. Okay, sounds good. Thank Bobby. you. Thanks, Les. 150 bucks, and you're all set. Okay, thank cool. you. Yep. Les had no interest in purchasing the item, so he only offered the customer a loan. Eventually, the two were able to work out a deal. Elephant skull. What is it? Skull of an elephant. Very unusual. It's very unusual. It's where the tusks went. I understand that. It came from Africa? Yeah, right. I saw my dad dealing with a customer for an elephant skull. How much do you want for something like this? Well, I'm looking to get about 18 out of it. What the hell would I do? So what would you take for it? I understand you started at 18, but... Yeah, well... The following customer brings in what he claims is the skull of an elephant. This was a first for the pawn shop, and apparently the customer got this item through a friend who went to Africa. He was looking to get some big money for it. Probably about 15 would be the lowest I'd do it. About 500. No, nope. 500, I'll take it back. Throw it in my family room. How about 12? How about 5? Thousand. That's as low as I'm gonna go. Africans are more expensive than the Asian ones, mm -hmm. and the Asians are 1900. There is a demand for elephant skulls. So you don't really want to lug it back home, do you? Bottom line for me would be $800, and that's it. While Les was a bit skeptical at first, he was quickly able to find out that African elephant skulls go for some decent money, and that's when he knew he had to close a deal with the customer. The fierce negotiations commence. You're at 800, I'm at 600. Are you buying it just to buy it, or are you buying it to sell it? I'm buying it to buy it. I'll tell you what, I'll go 650. 800. 700. Oh, 800. 700. I'll give it to you for seven. <laughs> you got a deal. <laughs> Thank you very much. The owner here, Les, I'm glad he sold it to Les because I believe he'll put it in his own personal collection. Thank you. Thank you. Have so a good day. You too. Les was definitely looking to make a huge profit, and after some negotiating, the two agreed at $700 for this elephant skull. Seth wasn't convinced this item was worth the money, but Les needed to have this skull in his collection. Gym workout. So the, the name in the in the corner. Hi. My workout equipment? Yeah. Sure, we we'll get this one here. Seen the commercials for these? Maybe or maybe you do. Am I doing it? You're doing it just right. Oh my god, okay. I think I like it. Let's try this. The following woman enters the pawn shop looking to purchase some workout equipment. Within a matter of seconds, things get very crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, I like this. Red one. 
You want to write her up? I thought you might want to. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good deal. It. Yes. Thank you so Thank much. You. Rich was definitely enjoying his time showing this customer all the workout equipment. Mannequin deal. What the hell is it? Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? What do we got? Eight pregnant mannequins for you. Right. Do you own a clothing store that you have these? Or? We did. I think it would be a good idea if guys knew exactly what we went through. Rich? <laughs> What's pregnant are you? What are you expecting? You do, actually. You're so lucky. The following customer brought in a bunch of pregnant mannequin dolls that were used for display purposes for their business. At first, Ashley was a bit confused, but she started to have some fun as she made Rich put on the pregnant stomach. So lucky I'm a nice guy. This looks like me after a weekend of... Uh... We'd use them to display for coats Clothing, and... Yeah. Right. New would go for $100. And the bellies are about four fifty for each? Yes. 25 a piece if you take all of them. What's the least you would take for all of them? Total. 150. Yeah, I guess that sounds good. 100. 100, you said? Ashley was surprisingly interested in these mannequins as she wanted to utilize them to display shop clothing. The customers were looking to get crazy amounts of money, but the most Ashley was willing to go up is 100 bucks for all of them. I would do 100. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, get them away. Getting rid of it out of storage. That's fun. <laughs> Ashley was able to close the deal, but the mannequins literally broke down a second later. Chicken deal. Hey, how are you, sir? I'm dirty, how are you, bud? Help me out get my chicken coop business off the ground. Wow, that's great. There's the many... beginning of my business right oh, there. Yeah. It's not very often that people show gratitude. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Great, great. The following customer enters the pawn shop to thank Les for helping him start his chicken business. This genuinely seemed like a sweet interaction, but it didn't take long for things to get crazy as the customer let out live chickens in the shop. Oh, oh, I've got all out now. Chase the chicken! <laughs> Don't let him make a mess. There you go. Thanks, guys. Thank Good seeing you, yourself. All right, you hang out of there. Thanks for the thought, not the way to show appreciation. What the hell are we going to do with this thing? These chickens did not hold back and made a huge mess across this entire pawn shop floor. While Les was very grateful that a customer showed appreciation, he didn't like the fact that his floor got all dirty in the process. Strange piercing. Hi, how are you? I've got an item here. We bought this item, we tried it. What is it? Prince Albert's wand. Hey, really? It looks like a kazoo. I didn't know what it was. This couple walks into American Jewelry and Loan, claiming that they're here to sell an item that they bought to try out, but have no use for it anymore. Piece of genital piercing jewelry. Oh, is it really? I've heard of Prince Albert in a can. Basically, um, inserts into the urethra, right down in the shaft. It was in his... It was the most disgusting, vulgar I have ever seen. When the couple explains what this strange-looking contraption is, it's safe to say that Les is a bit traumatized. To make matters worse, the dude starts giving a full-blown demonstration of the thing, and Ashley hates every second of it. Talk about something unhygienic. What I was interested was $150, quality piece of jewelry. It's a machine. You don't felt that it's completely... No, I How is it? I wasn't gonna touch it. Rich wasn't gonna touch it. It's a rather no, unique was... item. Here comes Dennis. Now, when Les, Rich, and Ashley hear what the dude is asking for his used genital piercing, it's pretty obvious that he has no idea about what's right or wrong. What do you got there? Whistle? Right, right. Yeah, but only dogs can hear it. Blowing it. Yeah. Type right of earring. Show me. No, know. go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> insert this through the urethra. Came out of his penis. Well, we appreciate you bringing it in. How about soap and water and a towel? You got sanitizer down there? <laughs> But now that the piercing is already there, Les, Ashley, and Rich use it to prank Dennis, who has absolutely no idea of what's going on. Underwater private parts. This is a very unique item, and you're not going to find it anywhere. This is part of an animal. These are walrus peni penises. Pretty big, too. Wow. If you think you've seen something weird, you have no idea what's coming when this lady walks into the store with the confidence of a lion. So is this how they got the phrase hard on? Then I guess it's not a baseball bat. It is not a baseball bat. My father-in-law was a big game hunter. Oh, you got lots of stuff. Oh, we have a huge, oh, yeah. huge pieces. Yeah. The woman's here with her husband, and apparently the dude's father was a crazy, talented game hunter who liked to collect animal private parts as a hobby. So how much you want for this stuff? $800. Why? I'm pretty sure I'm right in line with what you can find on the internet. Walks Bob. Yeah. Holy <laughs> He's really proficient. Five feet long, it's good. So what am I going to do with him? 
Okay. Getting down to business, the old man asks the couple what they're looking for in exchange for these walrus genitals. And the price that they want is unacceptable. My guy knows about these things. It wouldn't be more than 100 bucks. Okay. Sorry. Size matters when it comes to... Of course size matters. Coming in. <laughs> the deal doesn't go through at the end of the day, and the couple picks up their walrus genitals and heads back home. It's showtime. Hello. How you doing? I've got a lot of vintage stag movies from the 70s. How many movies do you have? But I just brought a few samples. Yeah, I'm even in some of those. This guy is at American Jewelry and Loan with a trolley full of items that he claims are collectibles. Are you you are? Yeah. What's your name? Bones Daly. Don't remember you. I, it was a short-lived career in oh, the movies. I my wow, that's really exciting. Sickening. <laughs> of course, Les is immediately intrigued by what the man has to say, and he wants all the juicy details. This is one adult star who isn't afraid to tell it how it is. Wow. <laughs> what did you want to do with them? Sell them. And they were going from 40 to a couple hundred bucks. It's a 16 millimeter color, large, and run this in theater. Getting down to business, Les asks the man what he's looking to sell them for. And get this, the man thinks that this is top quality cinema. Well, I mean, if you had, like, Gone with the Wind, that would probably be, be better more. off. Well, we appreciate you bringing it. Thank what did he expect us to do? We're a pawn shop, and this guy's bringing in porn. All right, where's the hand sanitizer? While Les lets the man know that it's great that he has such high-quality films, but this kind of genre just doesn't sell at a pawn shop. Jail time. How you doing? You can help me with this one. This is Larry. What you got? It's a prison toilet. And me and you, Larry. Come on, let's go check this bad boy out. We bought a house, and it was in a basement. Private dungeon down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Wow, there's no toilet seat. Suicide prevention um, to not have a toilet seat. It's stainless steel, am I correct? Yes. Yeah. Looks like it's been peed into me. This couple is at American Jewelry and Loan, and Les immediately goes up to meet them, introducing them to his trusty assistant, Larry. Now, the item that these two are here to pawn is a little strange, but Les is willing to play along. Did you pee in it? No, I never peed in it. Did you pee in it? I seen them uh, sell online, 650. Give me 200. <laughs> That's what you take? You won't take any less than 650? We could work on it. Why would I pay retail? Half, and then you can make a profit. 100 bucks. Sure, so Anybody that can, comes in here would definitely not want one of these. It's not going to be an easy sell. Les makes sure to ask all the important questions before kicking off negotiations. Now, as interested as Les is in the item, he wants to make it very clear to the sellers that it's not going to be very easy to sell. It's one of those things that you're going to have to find somebody. Is it unique? Yeah. How about two? There's no market for it. You ain't going to get another one of these coming I'll through. I'll tell you what. You want to flip it? It or call it. I'm leaving it up to you, Larry. He'll call it. When it's in the air, call it. Right? It's evident that the price for this one-of-a-kind item needs to be decided in an equally crazy way. 120. Let's do it, Larry. Call it. See ya. Thank you, Larry. High five. <laughs> Get away from me, Larry. I'm only kidding. That's all right. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys, thanks. Bye.